But you know, the back end can work out a little bit later, right? 
get on. You can be a loading app, but technically they can both of us in person twice. You know what I mean? Because it's just a showcase. A showcase of your interface, the look, and that uh, you can do the stuff together. You can wait for hackathons. Um, or, like I said, when the server code is not ready. And I'll, I'll show you guys. Uh, like I said, this was the exact same measure I had. Even, I, I was not going to be finished before this, the back in person, but I needed something quickly so I could show truly that I could simply just, whenever they're ready, point it toward them. And I needed a couple of things to showcase that, that, that I was doing was completely fine. So, the idea behind this is that it's a basic data store. What I'm going to be showing, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like parse, but parse can put some intelligence in the back end. This you can't. This is very, very basic. It's known dealing with well. And you can host it. You can host it elsewhere, and you can host it locally. And I'll show you guys what I mean by that. Because sometimes you need just you don't really care. And sometimes what you want to do, especially as mobile developers, if it's Android or if you want to do like enterprise library in, in, in iOS, uh, I'm not sure, like enterprise license, you can sort of send something to another client. They want to see it. Well, they still got to get access to your server. So I'm just going to give you guys an answer. After I show you guys how to do it locally, that you can put somewhere and it will work as well. Of course, parse will work this way, but there's settings and thinking about it, and then you have to sort of set up an account. And that. So, this is one way to do it without that. Okay. You, you guys can't even see that. Those are two guys from uh, Silicon Valley. I don't know if anybody watches the show, so they're watching the things. Um, this is to look out for uh, the guy with uh, the dog with the rock coming up his ass is encapsulation with data. Um, we're going to be faking what we do, so we're going to be doing things in the restful way that you don't have one link on a web server or a database server that has the inserts and another one for the deletes or for the update. It's going to be one way of doing it. The server can be slow, the one that you're testing it. By the way, it can also be very, very fast, right? Your service that you're going to eventually connect to might need to really access a server that takes a long time. So you have to be aware of it. You're going to fake that data. So you, even if you put a million records in the system, it's going to be fast. So it may be a lot faster than the server you're going to be able to get. So just be aware of that. And the same thing, um, we can load host locally, but you should be aware that you're hosting locally and that the URL is going to change. So you're going to host in a place that you have to put somewhere a variable that you're going to be aware of. And I'm just repeated everywhere in which case whenever the server's ready, you're like, great, now I got to take it everywhere. Put it in a single location. Does that make sense to everybody? You're going to be using www something, and then tomorrow's going to be API something. I have created, uh, so if you guys want to write this down, if not, I'll put it in the notes. Um, sort of a, something you can borrow from here. Uh, you can see what I'm going to be getting. So there are other things I'll talk about a little bit later, but first we'll talk about this solution, which I, I thought was a solution. Okay. So let's do it. So the idea is this service called JSON Server. Okay? And what JSON Server is, first of all, does everybody know what know what NPN is? A good understanding of it, anybody not have a good understanding of it? So it's a, it's a, it's a it's, it's an app store for developers that has both mainly 90% code for no developers, back end or front end. And uh, well, this 10% of this golden nuggets, this being one of them, these apps that do run no, but as far as you're concerned, they're just working to start, do their job, and who cares how they code it for the back end. So, JSON server is what we're going to be using, uh, so NPM, JSON server, and all that. Um, but what's amazing in this JSON server is this. Like, the video tutorial frequently, you know, you know, that's a website that only charges you to go ahead and check out the, the video on how to use it step by step, everything you need to set up and examples of it. Um, we, th there's back end service and front end service. And if you think about it, if you're a back end developer and you want to test, there are services like Postman, if you just heard about it. There are services like Swag. All those services are beautiful when you want to showcase your back end or test your back end. But we are at a loss if we are consuming the service. And this brings us to, to that level. This allows us to stand up essentially a service in a couple of seconds, 
zero recording in less than 30 seconds and it's up. Okay? And I'll show you how to do this by being, I mean, uh, I can even show you what's going on in here. So let's do that a little bit closer. So what I'm going to do is this basically, if you guys see it, I'm going to create a file. It's going to be a .json file. Um, and uh, this doesn't work with, as far as I know, I can that, but this other works. And you define your endpoints. What the URL is going to be, so you have API slash whatever, but this is what's going to be up there, and what it's normally going to return. So essentially making mock data, the difference is you're making mock data on a server, but as far as you're consuming it, will look like a real complete server that's been completed with all the intelligence. So you don't only have, essentially you're like, hey, I could do that, but just throwing the server up on, uh, you know, Facebook, um, um, you know, I've got JSON file up on GitHub and just pulling for it. That's true, but this server will let you not only pull the right information, it will let you pull it by the right URL. So you, you'll be your URL slash posts slash three or one, and we'll use this record right here. It was just this information. We'll look at it together this way. As well, you can look multiple locations. So that's, that's what I did. We had different services that were going to return different things in the server that, the, that we had to create. So I just sort of threw it on here. In fact, the only thing that I threw it on here, once I finished, I gave this JSON file to the end, end developer, and they were able to just copy and paste it. Because they knew all the fields that were going to be returned, and it's going to be, he knew all of my URLs that I was going to be hit by, and uh, they could even test themselves. You know what I mean? If it looked the same. Okay. So, and you simply start it. So, my GitHub it is it, it's just a TV file? No, it's a bit more than that. It's just how you install it. No. I'll show you guys what it is in a minute. What we have here is a couple of things. That's the DB file. And I'm going to show you what this does as well. This is managing. So there's a couple of things uh, that we can do with that. And the video just blows me away. Because what you have here is a way to start. I'll just simply start JSON server watch db.json. Okay? And that's it. I have a URL. You guys see that? So the URL is only because I only have one project. So I'm going to go access to this URL, and there's the information I have. This is my two don'ts. Everybody has a two do. This is something more revolutionary. Don't do this, don't. I'm going to say this, don't say night, and any, uh, just, just don't. Okay? So um, this is what you'll be able to see, and you're able to see exactly what's going on. So let's give us a, a, an idea of what's going on by Grabbing the example they had there. Just to give you an idea, I'm going to stop it. And you'll be able to see exactly whenever there's posts. You can't see it very well here, but uh, you have to take the idea. There's a sort of a line here, you can see where there's posts, there's going to be gets, it accepts updates, it accepts deletes. So you can truly have your, your site and app working exactly as it should. I don't have an example you guys, for you guys, but you guys can kind of see what's going on here. I did a post, and you can try with the whole thing. So let's copy this information. Sorry. Yeah. Can you do just straight gets with, you know, on the ID, or do you have yes. multiple brands? Absolutely. Great question. So not only can you do gets, you have a sort of the, not the full graph PL, you guys have seen it, but you have a portion of it. So how about a slice? Well, the number 20 to number 30. How about sorting them? I want a particular, I want to send the information to be sorted ascending or descending or by, by ID or by date or by name. There's some filters. I thought that was going to be over there. You can go ahead and do kind of search text. You know, like give me everything where the name is Miami. And ignore everything else. So it has a full response to it. Now the URL is a different meaning than you have in the end. Have that kind of information. Okay, that's the filter right there. So here we are, we should be able to say, well, give me where the author, author is in this, in this situation, only that. Or give me only IDs one and two, or give me the author statements that. For the comments, well, give me just the comments, or the author name is that. Okay? So if you delete something, it is deleted 100%. Yeah, delete 
leaves it out of the file itself and you pass it? It does, it does, absolutely. So, um, it, 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 here's the other, so let's go ahead and do that. So, we're going to hide the db.json. JSON server, watch db.json. So, A, it saves it on the file. B, it can at any moment, you guys can see this because of the color, but you can actually type S or U, I believe it is. S, enter, and now you've got a copy of this. So, let's just say you, you just did some testing. And you're like, this is the copy I'm going to do, we set every single time. But the developer speaks a new question. So I've now set a particular example with a particular GUI that I can go back to. Right? It's just a file there. So just close the existing uh, command, start with a new one with this new one. Now I'm, I've reset back to it. But it's a file, right? So you just can simply back it up or get or, or SVN, whatever you like. And, but this guy will do it in this case. There's no way you to make that command through the browser. And that will come a little bit relevant when I show you guys some, some tricks for it. Okay, so um, okay, so let's go to that URL, right? So it's localhost 3000. I should do it with the post right? So you guys know this service is essentially a way for me to test the back end use it all the time. Uh, this lets me go ahead and to to do posts. So I'm going to run and it saves the commands I'm doing. So here I am, leaving a send. Here I am, the same thing as before. And I'm like, you know what? That number three, let's delete it. So I'm going to go to the URL and do slash three and choose delete. I'm going to click on send. I'm going to get a reply back. In this case, blank. Whatever. Let's go ahead and click on the get again. And three, two, one. Right. So let's say updates, puts, uh, it'll, it's a patch, uh, differences between those two. But you do inserts, you have to obviously the IDs will be run by themselves. And you can define what ID it is. The field doesn't really have to do it, you have to tell it. There's a one of the command lines for it. But if you by itself, so you're ready to go, it will do it individually. So if I add other things on two realms, say for example, personnel or something else, that will do it as well. One of the things that blew my mind more than anything else, let me see if I have it here, and I have it in this JSON. So, can you guys see where there's a, uh, so, there's some useful to that, right? You go and, and uh, you go and you have a file, you, you set up what you want, you've communicated to the backend server or the person taking care of that service, what you need or what you're expecting, or they can communicate with you. You can sort of fill in the database, the DB file from that sort of file uh, with that information. Okay, what about a little more sophisticated? How about you want real information to have it on? The wonderful is, have you heard of Faker? Something else from NPNJS. So Faker has a beautiful list of, I mean, uh, uh, before you do that, I'm going to open up. It'll be a better experience here. Right? Oops. Uh, on MPN, Baker. This guy is magic. Yes. This blew me away. How about I give you three million unique names with icons from Twitter, graphics, avatars, addresses. Value addresses, states, binary codes, social security number looking things, don't worry, they're just random numbers. Phone numbers in real format, emails, again, all fail. Suffix, company information, company names, avatars. They're not going to be real, but with a little bit of code, your JSON server can not only return that information that you saw from a DB file, which is a static file, although it does update, as we just pointed out. But real information that's fake all the same, every single time you call it. So I've included in that, that GitHub a file that does it. Very, very simple. Don't worry about it. Just run it and you'll get kind of the same idea. All you need to worry about is what's inside here. Who cares what the rest of the code? You see where people, there's an ID, name, and an avatar. And from the example, you can, I'm going to show you guys, I'll show you guys something. And you can see what other fields you have in this problem. Very good. 
Okay? So, so you have a fake database. It's running your local box or on the server, on the local server that you have in the office and all that. Um, and, you know, with enough work and with enough knowledge, you can put it yourself in a real server. So, for example, the app that you send to the client, which doesn't have access to your internal server or your laptop, could hit it. Well, let me give you guys something a little bit better than that. There's a service called NAP. This service will host your website for free and host it in three seconds. Now, when I say it, I hate that the cheats are your house with that sort of general thing. I will give you, and I'll show you guys what it is, a URL right away that the whole world can access. That is following course. It's not something you can worry about as I for mobile developers, but most web developers have to worry about that. To the fact that the server will answer if you're coming up from another web server that will call. That's an important thing. In the GitHub, sorry guys, I have a pause to do that. Here's the server. Now, deploying. Ready? Initializing. Impressive. I have a presentation coming up that says three seconds or less. I think I've just run out of seconds. Those three letters I typed. And I have a URL. And yes, it's loading on this information. But in a second, I'll get a URL. It's copied already, so I didn't even step to do that. I think I can do that. But the first seven months will do that. Whenever you change it, this will not, this will be a lot faster. Okay? So let's get that working. Again, like all the free services out there, the URL sites. Right? But at least you have something you can hold to your, your, your clients and then send it to that client, your, your, your application or website. Never ask you for password. 
you send your login and ask for your email, and it emails you a link. It goes like a slide, but you just simply click on the link. There's no impact. Just your email. Um, so the other limitations, guess what? You got many emails. Boom, that gives lots of web tags. Yeah, and there's something that he said that there's some usefulness to do something like this. There's Eric, obviously if some you have not the least, like, like the same goes, if your first thing, first app, first version of the app, does look ugly, you take it too long. And if the first generation of the app isn't out with this, no, I, I you're guess. wasting too much of your time. Yeah, I'm just only going to say that there's some security, but if you don't, you know, you just have to be careful what, what kind of content or data you are putting through here, right? You just need to be sure. mindful. You don't want to, you don't want to have the, Interesting information out here. Uh, this is very valuable and useful. Uh, however, I would say that the technique you showed here is perfectly valid. If you are putting information that is somewhat sensitive, you just take a few more minutes and post it somewhere a bit more secure. Sure. This is the only comment I wanted to throw out here that, um, Absolutely. that there, there's value to doing that uh, in a centralized location. The hosting stuff is just have to be mindful. Next month, we're going to be talking about things like Parse. Um, there is Azure Mobile Services. Guys, I've said it a million times in different locations. Google this. And there's $25 of Azure hosting services. That's enough for two web servers. You want a web server that's more secure? How about two? Well, also with Azure, you can have as many web sites as you want. Yeah. Websites, you know, as long as you don't really care about them, they may put my URL. Yeah. You can have your name dot Azure, Azure Web, or whatever they call it, dot com. Absolutely. Um, but then you can have a different kind of name. You know, the, the credit is you can spend on SQL databases or a few other things. Absolutely. You so, can spin off the same NPM. I mean, the same node um, server seems to fall off down on, uh, on an Azure servers as well. So, I mean, one of the templates is, uh, is a node service, if I recall correctly. And but you can do it with the others on the keyboard windows. It's just exciting. Right. I can set up an Azure EC2 server in about 50 minutes. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it's 50 minutes. You can get it out to the customer just so they can see it. It's like a yeah, painting yeah. the first build, right? Yeah. I can do it. Taking six months. Here's the first one. Mm -hmm. right? This is where this one comes in. I didn't know we were going to have this presentation. I can't wait. Another serverless, in my opinion, are these services. Parse, Firebase. Firebase, I think you agree, will has taken on the mantle of Parse. But the thing with the, the open source Parse, that, that it's it's not it's not their community. It's Facebook that released that code. Am I wrong? Oh, that's great. Yes, yes, but, but they're no longer But now, now, yeah, now it's open source. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Part of the no they were required by Facebook. But their most recent version was developed by Facebook, and then it was open source, now it's a community here. Yeah. And Firebase got recently acquired by Google, but they did not start out as a Google project either. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, Firebase just recently has renamed what they do. They've had a file store now, which they did not have until recently. So Firebase has gotten very interesting. It's a Yeah, I yeah. As a matter of fact, now they're supposedly putting through analytics to Firebase, which I'm not entirely sure it's just a branding thing. No, they, they have, they have, I don't know how they do it. They can give you a link that you give to a customer, and the customer clicks on it. They install your app, and it kicks back to the server and you can find out your customer. Which customer, not only which customer sent you that customer, but when they did. That's no, yeah. I don't know about you guys, but how are they doing that? Uh, what, there's, you, you understand, if I send you a link to my app, I've lost control of it, now sitting on the app server. I can, I, I, can refer, I can tell you easily in two seconds how long that, how do you know that I didn't install a different app and then your app, you just know you clicked on the link. You don't even know I installed your app. 
I'm not some hot, I, I got it wrong, but this really blew me away. Uh, Firebase, what they did. Um, yeah, Firebase is worth taking a look at. It's changed a lot in the last six months. It's worth it. Firebase, you're gonna, you're gonna, oh, Firebase, like when you were talking about the first slide, why would you go to do back end? I was working on the project, I had a whole back end that we created. Yeah. He said they had resources there and have a whole full stack developer do it. In the end, that person didn't materialize. And to do the project, someone recommended Firebase. I never done it before. I was able to create an entire functional backend, right? And and came in way under budget, way ahead of schedule, because it actually did so much faster even than. Someone who specifically knows what they're doing, full stack developer, and we're inspired by this. Well, the beauty of it, too, is that they actually give you back some code that's pre configured to run against the environment you just set up. So, but this is their right. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Um, I heard it's right. And pre configured with your keys. Um, along those lines, before we move on to that, Amazon has a new product called the Mobile Console. Uh, that does something similar. When you go to a mobile console, one of the difficult things about Amazon, which still happens in Android a little bit as well, is that their offering is so wide. Like you can do so many things in this platform that it's really difficult to figure out, even as an advanced developer, to figure out what the hell you need, because there's a hundred things in front of you, right? And so in that, the that Amazon that mobile that console now, you go in and you literally answer a bunch of questions about what you're interested in, and they provision the networks, the setups, and they return you back code that is an app. They return you back a product that you literally run and compiles, and it uses the stuff you just provisioned. And then from that point on, you just kind of copy and paste whatever you need. So, so as you were mentioning, I've for a while ago, we mobile yeah. services. Right. So you can go in and you can set up mobile services, you can tell what a Examine that to one of these things and I plug it back in and you can download the server side, you can download the client side, and they call you for it, you can give you. Right. So what's interesting about these two things is that they do sort of provisioning for you, not just meet you up against them services. Uh, yeah. I mean you're kind of you're, you're, you're set up. Now the provisioning is not ideal and you'll still want to do it, but at least it tells you what the hell you need and you can now go read a little bit more. Well, well, the services they get from you. You hate Microsoft. I'm fucking hating Amazon. And you fucking hate me. I just want to and I'm in fucking Tokyo. I'm in fucking Tokyo. Why the fuck am I in Tokyo? Why the fuck? What the fuck is this? This is stupid. This Look, is at this. Look at this. Look at this. Do you see what services I have? Oh, I have these things. Why? Oh, because they like programmers. No, the reality is These guys. <laughs> 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 Cloud That's the stuff that Cornelius brings over to a uh, for snack time. What the fuck is Cloud Trail? <laughs> and why, why am I in Tokyo? If I refresh this, I'm going to be in like strong. And the worst, the worst part is I would get an email saying, okay, you're about to pay $12. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing $12? I just got all the service. I have to go to each country. Find out which server I turned on where. Automatically. It took me 15 minutes to try, because I don't have to the cloud, to try to get a virtual solution up oh. there. I can do 20 apps in 15 minutes, and in my in the command line, I just have three letters, five seconds, and I'm done. Yeah, but both my probes are really fully complex. I, I found that most people that don't like AWS really don't, don't understand how. I don't say any of the I don't say any of the words. I'll just make it that because, again, as somebody that saw AWS in the very beginning, it was very complicated and so that, you know, I spent a lot of hours and most, they're both really complex. What? Like five minutes. Come on. What What is web and mobile? Yeah, I know what it is. What is data storage? Ah, okay. Internet of things. Oh, that makes sense. Media storage. Yeah, but virtual machines. Once you click into that though, it starts to ask you questions where it gets, you can still get people in conference. It's a step process. Yeah. 15 minutes. 15 yeah. minutes because it kept on telling me, no, the virtual server didn't start up. I get it. You, you have a lot of stuff. But we'll leave it at that. So, what was the other thing you mentioned? I was going to say about this. 
that's it. Serverless is originally, that's what they came from, all that. It's originally a concept. They use 100% uh, uh, AWS. Uh, and I think it's, I hope that the next one we're going to present parts on an EW2 server. EC2 server. Because I don't know what that is. Listen, I think it's going to be fantastic. There's mobile services, they're all services for free, they have push notifications, develop language, sync, authorization, $25 in Azure. If you can't get, I can't spend that. I cannot, the number of times I've tried, get a free server from Amazon's free server right here. I cannot get it, I always get charged on someone. Are you even turning it on or not? So. Firebase, awesome. Magic. I'm done. Give it back. Look at her. Normally, you have to tell us. So, are you going to show you? Have some experiences, some personal experiences. I know we have some comments about Firebase that it actually worked well for you and your. No, no, I'm not against Firebase. Firebase is awesome. Firebase has, man. Anybody else tried it? Honestly, when I'm stubbing out the back end on a mobile app, I just throw JSON files right in the app, right in the package. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. Right. and you can locally access it, or you throw up in the server and yeah. This one, it's a real URL. Yeah, no, right. I totally get it. I think this is the value. I'm just saying my little process, if I don't have a back end, which is very often the case, yeah. I usually throw JSON files right in there. I don't like to abstract my data layer anyways, so I usually, it's really easy for me to put that on and off. Yeah. And it, it makes it super portable. I also then uh, work with RealmDB a lot. You know, use that. Uh, so RealmDB, uh, go to RealmDB, check that out. It's essentially just a local data store. The connection goes remotely as well. So it's a file-based, uh, document-based data system. You can essentially copy your local RealmDB from your instance of your app, put it up on a server, point your app to that, and it's going to work the same exact way. So it's, it's very portable. Does the RealmDB take care of the HTTP basic uh, networking code, or how do you call it over the no, I'm really, I use them in a separate library. Oh, entirely. And I don't just have what I use, just like, uh, just goes from <laughs> packing. Right. Okay. Yeah, so it's a little more hands on, but you can definitely work around the same thing. This is definitely seems like a solid solution, especially if you're shipping something to a client and you want that little tie around remote. Like, you definitely see a lot of value there. Right. There's a lot of different ways to do it if you're just doing local tech, you know, if you're just trying to work on something. There's a lot of different options. Absolutely. Yeah, it might say you have to work with, like, a mom and a friend or something. Yeah. 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 It, yeah, if you have you described this uh, I mean strong loop, it's a no bad man by you. If you're if you're a Ruby on Rails fan, they're, they're yeah. not you know, they, they, they let they do a lot of rules. There you can build something that you can literally do it by a command line, just a couple of typing. Once you get to know it, this one right here, and it is just meant to it ends up with a beautiful no J no J no SQL backend, sorry. It's running with no JS, but who cares? And they look like Swagger, right? you can interface with them, they can look at it, you can manipulate them, and then you can access them through your service, just from us. Yeah, I'm trying to guys to a really nice job and writing documentation also, which is why their library is very popular. I think why they have fire. It's almost like they wrote their documentation first and were dating it. So Strong Loop is a no? Uh, it is a no, but as far as I'm concerned. It's a no, but no, yeah, it was a, it's, a super, it's a super class of no, let's say. Right? But think of it that it stands on a web server. Um, you're, you're adding things, man, like you're answering wizards, and your database is being created for you. And at the end, there's a subscriber that came by. Yeah, but you see a lot of that asks you a bunch of things, and then it builds a really good foundation. And then you declare things a lot through, like, SAP, 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 like syntax. So it's very declarative in that sense. Um, I used the first time that I was with was before I had the idea of this. The problem I have with these companies is they produce a good product and then they get fired by somebody like an IBM and then you don't get that of course because it's a like exactly yeah. part. So I don't know where this problem sits right now in terms of like priority with IBM. You know, so I've heard good things about it. So they're still presenting like they're there at uh, two, three months ago, a book of JS we have an IBM.com presented. I mean it sounds like they're done. I, I hope they, you know, I hope they keep it, <coughs> they keep it 
as a good thing. Um, but you know, um, sometimes these larger companies they kind of lose interest in these products. I mean, we know about products so much. Uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's definitely worth looking into. If you like, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely you know, there's really good documentation and, and, and a lot of other good things thrown on top of it. Get some of the notes, no weird. Do you do any of the Latin expression? Do you know a lot of things in there without having to do a full back end? Yeah, Lambda is intriguing, but just the general problem I have with Amazon is that unless you, um, unless you live in the Amazon system 24 7 and took every Amazon course and certification that exists, um, Amazon is so hard to make heads or tails out of. So Lambda is in that. Well, I thought that was just me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, I was going to forget that.